Welcome. By the end of this video, you will be able to add dynamics as well as crescendo and decrescendo markings to the music that you are creating with MuseScore 3. Let's get started. So you will want to have your MuseScore open to the project that you're working on. And uh, adding dynamics is relatively easy. So you can go over to the left hand side of the screen and uh, for the palettes and one of the palettes is dynamics. So you can just click down on dynamics. And you can see again, if I just click the dynamics, nothing happens. But so what I need to do is I need to click uh, select first where I want the dynamic to go. So I, cl I click um, that note. I want it to be under there or associated with that. Then I would just click the dynamics that I want to have inserted there. And then uh, there it was uh, mezzo piano was um, inserted underneath that note. Let's say I want to move the dynamics. You just go ahead and select it and then you can drag it wherever you would like to uh, drag the dynamics. Um, most of the time the dynamics are in the middle of the score. Sometimes though you might want them, depending on if you have multiple parts, you might, might need them at the top or at the bottom of the score. So again, uh, that's how you can insert the dynamics and then um, move the dynamics around. Let's say I wanted to delete the dynamic that I had put there. I would just select and when it turns blue and then I just press delete. Um, so you can do that. Also control Z is to go back. So if you want to just um, undo the last thing you did, yeah, you can uh, do control Z too. Uh, let's see how many dynamics they have available here. So you can see they have a wide range of dynamics. Um, some of these you would uh, might need in some contemporary pieces that you're writing, um, but most of them, um, you know, are the main palette here are the, are the most common ones. And uh, again, they've got Sforzando's here as well uh, for dynamics. So anything that has to do with the um, volume that you're that you want to communicate to your uh, performers uh, and then your um, that what you want to communicate will be over here so again uh, let's say I wanted to create a couple uh, it's just again just uh, select where you want it you can select either the chord like that or you can select a measure so that would work too so let's say I selected that measure and I want a mezzo forte and it'll insert it there if I select the chord like I had before then I want that fortissimo, then it'll put it there also. So you can see how easily you can um, add dynamics uh, to uh, the music that you're working on. And in order to uh, add things like crescendo markings and decrescendo markings, you will want to go to the palettes on the left and find the palette that is for lines. So it's kind of a, a different one. Uh, so you look for lines and then you're going to drop it down with the triangle. So when you drop that down, you're going to see the different lines they have available. So they have, um, there's the crescendo and uh, the diminuendo. And they also have the, um, you can use the words, the expressive words as well. So for this one, let's start with the crescendo that we would like. And you're just going to click and then drag it over. And then you're going to see that it, it has a purple line that's connecting that to a note. So what that does is it's going to connect that uh, marking to the note, the beginning of that to the note that is there. So if we have the first note selected, I'm going to let go and you'll see it added a crescendo to the entire measure. So uh, let's say that um, I want that crescendo to go uh, less or more. I can change that. Um, one thing to point out though is uh, that the playback controls will reflect the crescendo markings and decrescendo markings that you put. So that's why whenever you're adding it to the note that it's important to find the note that you want it on. So let's say I want this to be longer or shorter. There's two ways to do that. You can either click on it and then it'll open up two boxes here. You click on the last box and then you can drag it over and you can see it's adding that crescendo marking. So the last note of the crescendo is the, the line that it's pointing to. So if I want to go to that note, the whole way to the end of the system, I can do that. Another way you can do that, do this is to uh, click on the crescendo marking and then click shift and then left or right. So if I go left, you'll see, uh, so shift and left, uh, it makes it smaller. So you can see I'm making it smaller with shift and left. If I want to make it larger, I can do shift and right. And the nice thing about this is that it usually um, gets the marking right where you want it. It's, it's nice and centered and everything if you use the shift um, right and left uh, shortcuts. So uh, if you want to move the crescendo, you just click the middle box and then you drag it where you would like it and you can see those lines are the same unless you move it further then the lines change so um, but let's say I want it above there maybe I have some text down here so you put it up there 
Um, so that's one way. So there's a decrescendo. To delete, you just cl click it one time and then press delete. So uh, that's how you can easily delete. Uh, decrescendo, the same thing. You can, let's say I have the note selected, I can just have the note selected and click it like I did there. So let me show you that again. So control Z is undo. So you know, see, let's say I want to start on this note. I'm gonna just have that note selected, it'll be blue. And then I'm gonna click on decrescendo. There we go. And so now we've got the decrescendo there. And let's say I wanna use shortcuts again. I can use shift and left and that will make it smaller and shift and right will make it larger. Okay, and to delete, just press delete. Uh, so those are crescendo decrescendo markings and then you also have these words and so you can click and dr drag and drop or uh, have the note selected and then just click the uh, word there. So again, a delete is just select the uh, crescendo or diminuendo marking and then press delete. If you have any questions about what you learned in this video, please drop them in the comments section below. I'll do my best to answer those. I also have other MuseScore 3 tutorial vi uh, videos available. I will put links around this video. This lesson is part of a complete MuseScore 3 course that I have available. I'll put the link in the description box below. If you enjoyed this, please like this video and subscribe to this channel. I thank you and I'll see you in the next video.